session, we will be learning how to interpret measures of position. Measures of position will become more meaningful if you know how to interpret them. In interpreting measures of position, you will know how many percent of the data or group is below, equal, or above a specific score. You will know whether somebody has successfully passed an examination or not. So let's have this one. Example number one, in a set of scores, the 15th percentile is 63, or P sub 15 is equal to 63. So what does this imply? So we may conclude from this statement that therefore, 15% of the scores is less than or equal to the score of 63. So we say 15% because we are talking about 15 percentile. So to have this in percent, this position, is only a matter of dividing 15 since, we're talking, since it is under percentile, so to be divided by 100. So 15 divided by 100 is 0 0.15. Since we need to transform this into percent, so we multiply it by 100, and this will give us 15. So that's why we concluded, we interpreted the data that there are 15% of the scores is less than or equal to the score of 63. So aside from this uh, simple interpretation, we can have the complement of this data. Since 15% of the scores is less than or equal, therefore, we may also state that 85% of the scores is greater than to the score of 3. So that 85% is something that came from 100% minus 15%. So that's why we arrive at 85%. So simply the complement of 15% in terms of 100%. Okay? Let's have another one. In a set of scores, the third decile is 8, or d sub 3 is equal to 8. Again, for us to interpret this instantly, so the first thing is we just simply convert the position into percent, so third decile means 3, then to be divided by 10, since we're talking about decile. So, dividing these two, this will give us 0 0.3, converting this decimal into percent needs to be multiplied by 100, and this will give us 30. So, therefore, we may conclude that 30% of the scores is less than or equal to the score of 8. For the complement, so 100 minus 30, that will give us 70. So 70% 70 of the scores is greater than to the score of 8. So we do have here greater than our next statement because we're having the complement of less than or equal. Okay, so and that is greater than. Let's have something different. The third quartile of the ages of the 506 grade 10 students at a certain high school is 16 years old. So what does this imply? So basically, so we may start with having the simple interpretation. So since you're talking about third quartile, so third quartile in percent is 3 divided by 4 because we're talking about quartile. So you know, dividing 3 by 4, this will give us 0 0.75 multiplying to 100. So this will result to 75. So therefore, we may conclude that 75% of the ages of the 506 grade 10 students at a certain high school is less than or equal to 16 years old. Again, so it is always that less than or equal on our initial or direct interpretation based on the data that was given. So for the complement, so if we have 75%, on the position, so for the complement of 75% is 25%, subtracting the 75 to 100. So that's why we got 25% of the ages of the 506 grade students at a certain high school is greater than to 16 years old. So we can also have this interpretation. Therefore, there are 380 grade 10 students that are aging 16 years old and below. So probably you're wondering where did this 380 came from. Okay? Since we are stating that 75% of 506 grade 10 students at certain high school is less than or equal to 16, we may simply get 75% of 506 for it is to be more perceivable. So because we are saying 75% of 506 of grade 10 students are less than or equal to 16 years old, so we doesn't know really how many of those students are less than or equal to 16 years old. So we may have this interpretation by simply getting 75% of 506 and that will give us 379.5. Of course, we need to round up because we're talking about students. So it is 380. 
Okay, so that's why we have here 380 greatest students that are aging 16 years old and below. So the complement of 380, since we're talking about 506 students, so yung minus 380, so therefore, there are 126 greatest students that are aging higher, of course, no? higher than 16 years old. Because 380 are 16 years old or below, therefore, the, num the remaining number of people who are older than 16 years old is 126. Okay? So, hope you understand how it is not that difficult to transform or to interpret basic information uh, using measures of position. Let's have this one. Let's try to answer this problem. Mario got a score of 40 in an entrance exam to college. If the passing score is at third quartile of the 50 item test, did he get enough score to pass the entrance exam? So, for us to know, so what we need to do is to determine what is the passing score. It is only said that the passing score is at the third quartile. So, what we are going to do is to determine the third quartile for a 50 item test. So for us to do that, we just simply get the percent of third quartile. So that is 0 0.75. Again, for the record, to have it in decimal, so 3 divided by 4. So we're not going to transform it into percent because we are still in the process of computing. So 3 divided by 4, so 3 for third and 4 for quartile. So that will give us 0 0.75. And this value that we got is to be multiplied by the number of items that, is, that was given, so which is 50 items. So, 0 0.75 times 50. Okay? And that will give us 38. Okay? So, since 38 is the passing score, therefore, we may conclude now that yes, Mario passed the exam because the passing score of the 50 item test is just 38. Since he got 40, so therefore, he passed the entrance exam. Another problem. The score of James in English is the ninth decile. If the passing score is the upper quartile, which is quartile 3, did he pass the exam? So, here we don't have any basis for the scores. So, what we're just simply going to do is to compare the two measures of position. So, it is the ninth decile versus the upper quartile. So, which is higher? So, take note that the said passing score is the upper quartile only. So, we must have a higher percent for the ninth decile for us to consider that James managed to pass the test. So, what is ninth decile in percent? So, 9 divided by 10. So, 9 for ninth and 10 for decile. So, this will give us 0 0.9 multiplying it to 100 for us to have it in percent. So, this will give us 90%. While for the upper quartile, so for the upper quartile, we do have there 3 divided by 4, giving us 0 0.75 again. Then we multiplied by 100 to have it in percent, and this will give us 75 only. So since 90% is higher than 75%, therefore, we may conclude now that, yes, yes, James managed to pass. Because his score represents 90% and the passing score is just 75, which is above the said passing score. Okay? So, this is how we interpret simple information, use uh, con uh, data or statement containing measures of position. So, that's all. So, thank you for watching. Hope you understand our topic. Hope you understand the process of interpreting uh, measures of position. Thank you for watching.